네, 아, 소리? <웃음> 네, 잘 들리시죠? 네. 화면을 공유를 하겠습니다. 네, 트랜스레이터, can you hear, hear me? 네, 기도하시겠습니다. 어, oh, Father, with full of mercy and love, you saved us from all our sins, and you made us your children, and even you bring us in the precious church, which is your body, so that we can supply it every day. And we gather today as your commandment. So please let us understand your will and your word deeply. And we might understand that what you want us to do and what kind of things we have to abandon from our life and also what we have to follow uh, to decide in our youth time and please be with us this time and by your word we live our life according to the bible so we really hope and pray that the rest of our life are all devoted by devoted devoted by um um, for your gospel and live your will. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Enjoy dinner today. Yeah, thank you for serving. Uh, Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 1. Beginning of today's scripture, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. Uh, let's read it together. The old good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Yeah. Um, the title today uh, looks quite important, right? So, call of Christian life. What is our heart of Christian life? Uh, what is the important thing of our faith life? Uh, we could make many things about it, but um, uh, simply two things today and uh, next week we will uh, learn together. The first thing is forgiveness and uh, the service. Uh, yeah, so the verse we read uh, now is a good name is better than precious ointment. So the Bible um, encourages that we have to get a good name, receive a good name. Better than uh, is better than a precious ointment. I think precious ointment, which means uh, the treasures in this world, for example, money or fame or pleasure or knowledge could be. Uh, many people, they pursue worldly things in this world, but uh, rather than possess that things, uh, so we need to pursue a good name before God. So we know that there are many people in the Bible who received a good name, right? Uh, who, who were they? Many people who received a good name before God. Uh, mainly in Hebrew chapter 11, right? Yeah, the chapter of belief. So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David, um, and New Testament, Peter, right, and Apostle Paul, and his com uh, companions, many people, they received good name. Uh, but on the other hand, at the same time, um, there are people who were saved, though uh, they had bad name. 
three names. Who were they? Do you have any idea of them? Uh, though they were saved, but they had a uh, not very good name. Um, uh, Lot, right? The Bible said that Lot was a righteous, but he uh, couldn't give, uh, couldn't have a, a very good name because he left Abraham, which is the origin of uh, the blessing. And after he leave, leaving the uh, leaving Abraham, God uh, no longer appeared to him. So he's a good example. And also maybe um, in New Testament, Ananiah and Sapphira, uh, we believe they were saved people because God never punished who were not saved uh, 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 if they, they didn't give some offering, right? Uh, so we believe they are saved people. And also, we don't know exactly about Demas. He was saved or not. But anyway, he left of school. So today, we are going to learn the core of Christian life uh, through the two people who received good names. Yeah, so it would be really good that if we uh, can receive good name when we meet God. So uh, in New Testament, in New Testament, as we know, uh, most of epistles are written to churches. So book of Rome, we know, and book of Corinth, book of uh, Galatia, book of Ephesus, Philippi, Colossae, and Thessalonica. So most, let, most of letters are written for churches, but uh, different from them, there are some epistles written for individuals. Uh, the first Timothy and second Timothy and Titus were there. Uh, we know that Timothy and Titus, they were all pastors. So the purpose of these, these epistles is very clear. So let them know, teach them uh, that Timothy was a young pastor and that Titus was sent to a place which is um, the corrupted, uh, corrupted uh, the place. Uh, so they need to know, the Opus Paul, the field, the needs of uh, letting them know how to uh, ministry, uh, to the how to serve, how to uh, preach the gospel, the place, and how to serve the brothers and sisters. Yeah, so we, we call that episodes like uh, pastoral episodes. So they have clear purpose. But a little bit uh, different from them, we know uh, two um, individual episodes sent to uh, Philemon, Philemon and uh, Gaius. So two Bible, uh, Bible was written, uh, not pastors, only laymen, just ordinary Christian. So I really thought about why, what's the reason that, um, you know that, uh, um, uh, so imagine that the Opus Paul, he sent uh, Philemon uh, individually, the letter. And that letter is now remained forever in the Bible. So it would be really, really great that if imagine uh, the Opus Paul sent me uh, uh, personally the letter and that letter written in the Bible uh, for thousand years, uh, not only thousand years in, uh, written in heaven forever, uh, really amazing. Yeah. And also this uh, third John is a letter from Apostle John and to uh, Gaius, his friend Gaius. Um, so today we will think about what was it, uh, what was it they did, so that uh, their name remains the Bible forever, and uh, what's the secret that they, uh, their names, uh, uh, enter into the Bible. Um, yeah. So Ecclesiastes chapter seven verse one: Good name, a good name is better than precious ointment. So we believe Gaius and Plemon, they were really. Uh, the people who received good name. So uh, how they um, know, how they knew that uh, what is the Christian life uh, is about? Uh, because they learned the Bible properly. So we believe that Philemon and Gaius, they learned the Bible properly. That's why they have uh, very well focused about Christian life. For example, many people, um, they uh, tried, they try to live the Christian life very uh, much, but they only focus on uh, their thoughts, on their way, uh, which is different from the Bible. 
is not uh, very useful, right? It's no use sometimes. But they knew that what God wants to me and, and the, what God uh, has done for me, so that's why they have uh, focused very well about Christian life. So uh, the main point, main message of Book of Philemon is forgiveness. And the main point of Sir John is service. That's why they knew it is very important. So they focused on, on them and then they were glorified uh, before God. So I hope that you also um, know what is very important in our Christian life uh, so that uh, we can um, focus rightly about uh, our Christian life. Yeah. So today, uh, we will learn about the first core of Christian life, which is forgiveness. And uh, next week, we will learn about the service. Yeah. Uh, this is very interesting uh, animation, the background, is, which, is explains, which explains uh, the book of Philemon is about. Ready to listen to? Yeah. Why? Oh, sorry. <laughs> My computer always make me true. What is the book of Philemon is about? So there's this guy named the Apostle Paul. And Paul loves Jesus and preaches the gospel around the world, including in the city of Ephesus, where this other guy, Philemon, meets Jesus, is saved, and becomes a Christian. Philemon goes back to his hometown, a city called Colossae, and becomes a leader in the local church there. Philemon has a really big house because he's a wealthy business owner, and he allows the church to use his home for church services. About 10 years later, one of Philemon's slaves, Onesimus, steals money and runs away to Rome. While in Rome, their runaway slave meets the same Apostle Paul that his master had heard a decade earlier. And just like his master, Onesimus becomes a Christian after hearing Paul preach the gospel. Once Paul realizes that Onesimus is a runaway slave, he sends Onesimus home to Philemon with a letter he's written to Philemon, his family, and his church, explaining that Onesimus had become a Christian and should be forgiven for running away and stealing. Paul gives Philemon the opportunity to forgive Onesimus and receive his runaway slave as a brother in faith, and the church around them gets an opportunity to see what forgiveness really looks like. The letter that Paul wrote is the book of Philemon. Yeah. Yeah. Did you understand what this book of Philemon about? Very touching story. Uh, so the main message of uh, book of Philemon is forgiveness. Let's read this Philemon chapter 1 verse 10, uh, 10 to 12. Uh, book of Philemon chapter 1 verse 10 to 12. So I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains. So from this verse, you can see uh, that I have begotten, right? He is my son. means that Onesimus was saved by Paul's preaching when he was in prison, right? 11. Who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. So before he was saved, he's his unprofitable person, but now he was saved and it's really helpful for me. 12. I'm sending him back. You therefore receive him. That is my own heart. Yeah. So as we saw uh, from the video, so a slave named Onesimus, he fled away after causing some damage uh, to his master, Philemon. But later, Onesimus met Opus Paul and he was saved. And after, he became his co-worker. So his uh, life was totally changed. So in the Bible, uh, it's not recorded exactly, but we can believe that, uh, do you think that Philemon forgave Onesimus or not? We believe, right? Because uh, according to this verse, if then, this is Apostle Paul said, if then you count me as a partner, receive him, Onesimus, as you, as you would me, right? If he has wronged you, if he has something wrong you and owes anything, put that on my account. So when I'm reading this verse, it really reminds me about Jesus Christ. 
So Onesimus is shadow of us, right? We all sinners, we sinned against God and we fled away God's face. And the, the Philemon is um, the model of righteous gods, right? He's owner, he's master of us. He made us, he created, right? Uh, but because of our sin, we cannot stand before him. But in this time, uh, the, uh, meanwhile, uh, Jesus was, um, became as a mediator between us and uh, God, right? So he tried to make an intercession. So like, it, like also Paul is saying that if he has wronged you and owes anything, put it on my account. I will bear everything. Really same account like Jesus Christ did. So uh, Philemon, he knew that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, forgave his all sins, and then he also tried it his life, right? He, because he was forgiven by uh, the Lord, and then he now is his turn to forgive others. Right? It's a really uh, touching story. So uh, we have to, we need to apply this uh, really important lesson for our life. So we know that uh, the very uh, uh, the famous story about Matthew chapter 18 about forgiving. So uh, we need to ask ourselves that am I practicing forgiveness? Because we all forgiven, right? So I think uh, who is able to forgive others? Who is able to forgive others? I think those who have been forgiven of their sins by the Lord. Yeah. Those who was for, those who were forgiven by God, they can also forgive others. So in other words, uh, some people claim that I, I can, I never forgive them. That means he might be never experienced forgiveness by the Lord. Right? So uh, Matthew chapter 18, uh, the Peter, the Peter asked Jesus then, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? So in this time, maybe someone um, uh, harm uh, uh, Peter or make some damage uh, Peter so he was upset how many times I forgive him she just said I do not say to you up to seven not only seven times but up to 70 times seven then what, how many times 70 times seven 490 times maybe uh, so uh, she just gave some example in this situation the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king which means God, who wants to settle account with his servants. So I think verse 23 is about, Revelation chapter 20 is about the judgment seat. So this verse shows us that what God will do when we pass away. He will settle account with his angels. Right? So settle account means um, some uh, pay something, right? So we have to pay back uh, the sins we committed in this world. So uh, when he had begun to set account, one, one means us, we, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. I tried to calculate this um, amount of money, how much is it? Uh, 10,000 talents is really, really uh, unsearchable amount of money. Uh, roughly is um, the uh, six, more than more than 100,000 years time for 100, more than 100,000 years time you uh, work uh, and save money without any spend spending. And that is nearly uh, what 10,000 talents is a really big amount of money. That means uh, shows us how much, how many sins we committed. Uh, we uh, committed before God. And then, uh, but as he was not able to pay, because we have no ability to pay our sin. So his master commanded that everyone should be uh, uh, paid. And the servant fell down before him, Master, have patience with me, I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved and compassion released him and forgave him the debt. Right? So 10,000 talents was paid for free only because of his compassion, right? So Titus chapter three, verse five is that not by work, but 
uh, only uh, by his mercy we were all saved. Remember that verse, right? Titus chapter 3, verse 5. So our salvation is only done by only God's uh, compassion. Uh, 28, but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him just a hundred denarii, the much, much smaller than the uh, 10,000 uh, talents. And he laid his hand on him, took him the, by the throat and saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and he said, begged him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Really same, uh, the word that he used to be to his king, right? Uh, and then, how can we expect that his um, the act uh, is this servant? This, I think this should, servant should have uh, uh, forgive that another servant, right? Because he was forgiven much, much more uh, bigger money uh, from the king. But uh, different from our thought, he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. And so his fellow servant saw what he had been done, was very grief and some upset, and came and told the master all that he had done. And 32, his master, after he had called him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have, done, have, had, have had compassion on your fellow servant, just I had pity on you. So his master was angry, delivered him to tortures until he should pay all that he was due to him. 35, shall we read 35 together? So, my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Uh, yeah, so likewise, heavenly father will do the same each of you. So we need forgive brothers and sisters from our hearts, right? not just pretending to forgive, but God wants us to forgive from our hearts. Yeah. And we know that uh, the, um, the Lord's Prayer, the Matthew chapter 7, 6, also similar verse that, who do not forgive could not be forgiven. Jesus' uh, prayer, so for if you forgive men their trespasses, uh, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. A really scary verse, right? So we need to, we have to forgive more than 490 times. Right? It's, it's very natural because we were forgiven way more great uh, the, the sins uh, that we, uh, we try to forgive others. So, moreover, the Bible said, Proverbs chapter 19, it is honor for me to forgive others. So, this, the discretion, the wisdom of man makes him slow to anger, and his glory is to overlook a transgression. So, it means that God will glorify the people who forgive others. God promised. So, for example, we know the Joseph, right? Joseph, he forgave his brothers who sold him as a slave to Egypt. And David, the king, David also forgave Saul, who tried to kill him. So God uh, honored them and they were glorified as the Bible promised. Right? So when we, I think that, that forgive others is really, really not easy, right? Mm. But uh, who could be honored uh, is who uh, forgive others. The Philemon teaches us the lesson. And also, the Philemon was loved by many people, not only certain people. So Philemon chapter 1 verse 1 said, Paul, prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved. Not only one or two people loved him, our beloved means many people loved him. So also the verse 5, hearing of your love and faith toward Lord Jesus and towards all the saints. So he loves not only few people, he loved all the saints and he also be loved by all the people, all the saints in the church. So I thought that 
in the church, uh, there are some Christians uh, who have fellowship with only they like. But I think it's not acceptable, right? It's not worthy as a Christian. So we have to uh, have a good fellowship with uh, all the born again brothers and sisters. And I thought that who could be uh, here? The Pilemon was the person who loved by many, right? Who could be loved by many people? Who was able to be loved by many people, not only a few people? I think, is it possible selfish people loved by many? I, I don't agree. Right? Who loves, who loves uh, self-centered people? Right? So we believe Pilem was the person who generous. He was very generous. He liked to give many things to others, even though he was um, a wealthy and business person. Uh, but he uh, wasn't uh, greedy, and he, um, how do you say that, the opposite meaning of selfish, <laughs> love others, right? And he really loved others. That's why uh, many people loved him. Yeah, so people who like to give and who forgive and serve others will be loved by many people. Yeah, so Philemon, his life teaches, teaches us that what is our Christian life should be. So uh, I think we are in the same situation, not only him. So we, if we want to gain a good name, so Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1, uh, urges us that we need to have a good name. So in order to have a good name, uh, then we want to, and we want to be loved by brothers and sisters, and then we ought to forgive others, like Philemon. And we uh, freely give things to people if they need. And verse 2 also, uh, to the beloved Apia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. A church in your house. That means church is not a building, right? Uh, how could a building or a church building in there, in a house? So Archippa and Archippus, did you know that who, who was Archippa and Archippus? after mentioning Akipa and Akipas and your, your house. So Akipa was Philemon's wife. He was also saved sister and Akipas was his son. So Philemon, Akipa and Akipas, they were uh, uh, used by God really greatly and they served God, not only Philemon alone, they uh, united and they served God together. So I think their family is a really good example of that church. So uh, their family was really used by God preciously. So um, we know that Bible, there is one more by one more verse, Archippus name up here. Do you know that? Where, where is it? Uh, Bible quiz. <laughs> Archippus names appear in Colossians chapter four one more time. So this is Apostle Paul told uh, to Archippus, says to Archippus, so this, please deliver this message to Archippus personally. Take heed to the ministry which you have received in the law, that you may fulfill it. So from this verse, we can uh, assume that Archippus was the person, ministry means that he served the church, right? So we believe he is a leader of the church or the pastor, in the, in the church, we can see. And so the ministry which you have received in the law, it means that he, Archippus, um, he really followed his parents and received their faith and grew in the church and finally became a, a God's worker. So uh, this story uh, really um, uh, uh, gives some lesson to us. So among here, some uh, the parents, right? Yeah. yeah. Hannah and was father and you are father. So in the future, you all will be uh, the parents. I think it would be really, really great that, um, I think nothing better than this. If our children is received, if our children receive salvation and become uh, the God's worker, and then I think there's nothing more better than this. Right? What is our desire to our children? If they get salvation, if they become God's worker, if they're used by God, 
And then I think it's the greatest one. Yeah. So I think Philemon and Akepa, the parents, they must have been trying to establish their son, Akepa's, in the church. So I believe uh, Akepa's, the son, he must have learned from their fathers, the father and the mother, uh, the Christians, uh, that uh, they forgave um, Onishimus. <laughs> so I thought that um, Akipos, whether Akipos knew or not, that uh, the letter, the private letter from Apostle Paul to Philemon, right? I think Philemon may show the letter to his son, Akipos. Uh, this is the letter from Apostle Paul. And then he was curious that how, how, uh, uh, how, how my father, how, how my father Philemon is going to do. And finally, he forgave the uh, Onesimus, and then he learned so many things from his father's uh, behavior and acts. So I think if Philemon uh, criticized or judged others, then Archippus might as well saw his father's behavior and couldn't become a worker in the church. So they a really good family in Christ. And moreover, uh, verse 6 and 7, Philemon's face became effective. So in Korean version, I, I think it's easier to understand that uh, Korean version verse 6 is that uh, the, the uh, faithful fellowship, translated this way, faithful fellowship, he had, Philemon had a faithful fellowship with brothers and sisters in the church. But in the English version, uh, that the sharing of your face, here uh, translated in the sharing your face. So uh, Philemon, he shared his face and may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you and I we, we have in Christ Jesus. So uh, through this verse, we can see uh, Philemon, uh, he tried to explain brothers and sisters how uh, Apostle Paul and his companion is doing very important thing. He is in on God's side, right? Maybe uh, there was some brothers or sisters in the church back then. Uh, some people they just criticize or judge Apostle Paul, right? Have a negative heart towards them. But after fellowship with Philemon, they were recovered, right? They uh, have great joy and consolation in their love and they refreshed. Yeah. So um, we need to think uh, and ask ourselves that do we, uh, the person who have a uh, good fellowship with brothers and sisters, what happened after I have fellowship with them and their face recovered or they rather become negative to, to church? Uh, that means we uh, had a uh, bad, not very good uh, the fellowship. So, uh, so here said that you will have full understanding of every good things we have in Christ. Yeah. So do I let people know that the pastor or the church workers are doing good in Christ? I, I think it's possible that some people, they are curious or have a negative heart uh, to church. Why are our church uh, moving in this time? Maybe <laughs> why, why, they, uh, why we have to have some offering for something like that. But uh, if there is brother or sister like Philemon, if they have a fellowship with them, then they will uh, solve their problem from uh, the, through the fellowship. Yeah, so Ephesians chapter four, should we move the Ephesians chapter four? Thirty-two. Yeah, Ephesians chapter four, thirty-two. Let's read it together. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. Yeah. As Jesus Christ forgave you, so we were forgiven greatly. Uh, we need to meditate continuously how many sins, how much sins we were forgiven by God's grace. And then we can easily forgive brothers and sisters. It's easy, right? Uh, if we remind how much our sins, 
and then we can easily forgive others. So Philemon was written in that background, and the first core of Christian life is forgiveness, we can understand. The second, another core of Christian life is service will be delivered next week. Yeah. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord. We learned very important lesson, how important forgiveness is in our Christian life from the book of Philemon. So we hope that more and more people uh, arises or rose in our church who is like Philemon, who can uh, love brothers and sisters, have a faithful fellowship with brothers and sisters, and get on well with all the people in the church. So please use us and so that we can preach the gospel, more people, and establish your church more strengthen. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for delivering pastor. And we will have five minutes break. And after that, have all the fellowships all together.